Tony Curtis is one of the Hollywood greats, famed for his performances in films like Spartacus and Some Like It Hot. But the actor, born as Bernie Schwartz, was always dogged by his painful early years in New York City. As his career developed, his four marriages failed, and he later plunged into a cycle of alcohol and drug abuse. He overcame his addiction and eventually married again. Now, in his early 80s, he's been battling serious ill health. As a clinical psychologist, I wondered what had sustained him through the highs and lows of his remarkable life and what it is that continues to make him such an extraordinary survivor. How are you? Fine. I understand you've been quite ill lately. I was last year. I had pneumonia and it was so intense that for about Oh, just under three months, I didn't move. I was incapacitated at the hospital. And I lost the use of my legs because I hadn't used them. And I was afraid, Pamela, that it meant uh, I would never walk again. Were you afraid you would die? I never thought of it because I never confronted it. That was the intriguing thing for me. I never looked it in the face. I'm wondering if you have ever really faced your mortality. I, I faced it two or three times as a boy. I had a brother named Julius who was uh, hit by a truck in New York City. He was nine and I was 12. He never regained consciousness. And my parents sent me why to identify my that? brother. Why would they send you to identify? I don't know. It offended me and frightened me. I wasn't 13 yet and I was doing this. I got right up to Julie's ear and I whispered to him. I said, Julie, it's me. I'm here with you. Not to worry. I'm sorry I didn't want you to play with me and my friends. But when you get better, we'll hang out a lot. I'm sorry. I apologize for my rudeness that I had done with him before he got in. You I, still uh, feel responsible for your brother's death? Had I not chased him away from me, perhaps he would have lived. He only went following the American Legion ban because I didn't want him to hang out with me. You can't have more enough reason than that, can you? This happened, what, 70 years ago at least? How have you managed to live with this feeling that you had that responsibility? How have you managed to deal with that in your life? By being kind and considerate with everybody I meet. I make a point of it. I find that this affection I feel from people that I can reciprocate has been a great uh, uh, calming of me. I'm a very excitable person, have been all my life. And after that death of Julie, I, I did the most bizarre things as a boy, physical things. I jump on the back of trolley cars, taxi cabs, we used to take old mattresses, me and my buddies, that we found, and we put them on the ground outside of a second story window. And they'd let me sit there for as long as I wanted. And all of a sudden I got up and jumped and landed on that mattress. And I wanted to do it because I decided <laughs> if, uh, if I was allowed to do this because of my behavior with Julie. So you, even at that young age, you made the connection between Julie's death and your attempts to court death, in a sense? Well, uh, what I made was uh, the connection that, that my behavior, physical behavior, there was no other way I could expect it. I, 
I had very little education. I used to deliver clothes for my father. My mother used to slap me around. Uh, the only way I was able to achieve what I wanted was physically. When I did a stunt, see, I was already thinking of stunts at the age of uh, 12, 13, 14. And if I was able to do it and not hurt myself, that was affirmation. That was, I'm doing okay. And this was the madnesses that were running through my brain. When I read about those stunts that you did, um, just following your, your brother's death, I thought to myself that you were, I suppose, trying to kill yourself in a, in a passive way. Yes. There was always the chance of death. And yes. if it happened, perhaps at some level, you thought you deserved to die. Yes. What was the reason? To get out of the... Escape. Escape out of this miserable environment that was in. The death of Julie, the way they buried him. How did they bury him? It was uptown in a funeral parlor. And they had him in a casket. It was hard for me to look, but I did. And somebody went and lifted his head and removed the pillow under his head. And the pillow was like pink for the blood. It wasn't as intense as the blood and rearranged it. I thought, why shouldn't I do that? I was his brother. Some strange hands lifting his head. That's, that offended me. And then we closed the casket. There was a lot of prayers going on. I heard these people mumbling and praying and wailing of what they thought God was, that this was the way to reach God. Of, what good was it, Pam? I went down to the East River that I used to go out and hang out. I used to, I swam there for a while. And I went up to the edge of the water and I asked God to let me see Julie. Let me just see him. I don't want to talk to him. Let me just even hear his voice. I'll never tell anybody and I will be good for the rest of my life. That's what I said. I'll be good for the rest of my life. 